Let's see. Oh, what the heck? Oh, it's me. Okay. Oh, wow, I can see us. Isn't that reflection? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, it's me, Nina, and we have a special guest, Chelsea. Um, do you want to tell them about your background? Yeah, um, my name is Chelsea. I'm from New York. Woo! Um, and so I grew up in a Indian Malayali Pentecostal church, just like, um, just like Nina. <laughs> yeah, and we've kind of like known each other our whole life, but we've just started like yeah. being friends like over the past couple of years. Yeah, we'd see each other at conferences and then make eye contact and walk away <laughs> and like our moms would just be like hey like you know yeah. but yeah um and so i went to school up in SUNY Cortland um for education and, and i'm also a teacher <laughs> yeah yeah so a lot of fun yeah yes we do yeah <laughs> um so i went for childhood education and now i am doing missions yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so what's really cool is um I'm, i won't say the location because i don't know how much is um mm -hmm. confidential um, but she went away for went to nine, Asia. Yeah, That's Asia. Okay. <laughs> Asia for nine months, mm -hmm. um, and she's going to be going away again for full time, yeah. um, for like a, a specified time commitment, um, like a couple years. So, a lot of you who are watching may have wanted to do missions or something like that, and I figured why not talk to someone who you know is doing it, yeah. you know, and who's yeah. going abroad, and just see like why she chose to do it because maybe you want to do that and you don't know like if God has called you or not. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so I guess the first question is, um, and I'm stealing it too because she's going to be speaking <laughs> about this um, during ladies meeting and we're at a conference by the way, yeah. we're in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, one of the questions that the auntie mentioned that I feel like would be relevant yeah. is um, like why missions? Yeah. You know, like, um, or more so, how do you know God is calling you to missions? Mm -hmm. You know? So what's your, you know? Yeah. Um, so for me, I've never really, like my whole life, like I never felt like this call to be a missionary. Um, or to do missions like if I wanted I had this thought like I would do like two or three week like mission trips like during the summer but Bad never <laughs> yeah, but never like something long term or a longer period of time um, because I had an idea of what my life would look like um, so once I got past like all the plans that I had for my life um, God was showing me that like, there was a great need for people in the world to know about him I just got cut off, but we're gonna continue. <laughs> <laughs> so evangelism is like scarce in this area. So um, God was showing me, like Chelsea, like I, I want you to do something, and be a part of something so much bigger than you. Like you know, um, I knew that I could accomplish things on my own. Like I'm a very goal oriented person, so I knew that um, whatever I was doing with my life, I wanted to be able to do it by relying on God. Um, so that kind of led me to um, pursuing missions. Um, especially with the organization that I'm going with, which I probably shouldn't say. You can, okay, you can look it up, Campus Target. It's okay, because we're in America. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's how I felt the call to missions. Like, ex the more I got involved, I should say, the more God gave me a heart for missions. Um, so don't, like, feel like, oh, you can, you have to, like, hear the voice of God to, like, step out into missions. It's, like, kind of, like, like if the if you see like there's an open door in your like life like walk through it like for missions and God will continually just like open your heart for missions because mm. God's heart is that all would be found right and that, that none would be lost and whether you go or you um, pray for people or you give financially um, but definitely like, your 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 life like perspective will change um, when you open that door. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. And you know, um, I want to ask you some questions about like go, like being yeah. there. Um, yeah. But another question I have is, there's some obstacles before you go, yeah. like um, like fundraising, yeah. and um, also like even your family. Yeah. So like, how do you overcome yeah. that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I like that. I don't know if yeah. that's the hardest part, but like yeah. you can let us know. But like, how do yeah. you you know? So um, I can start with the fundraising one because it's a little bit easier to tackle, mm -hmm. and then I can oh, that's the family. Okay. Yeah. And I would think fundraising would be the hardest. Yeah. So um, it depends on how you look at it, but. Fun yeah. Fundraising, so um, the organization that I'm with, we raise our own support. Um, so I'm in a season right now of support raising, right? And so what it and is... it's different, like, like, for short term and long term. Yes. So um, since I'm going back long term, I'm raising a lot of... Uh, I'm building a team, basically, of people that would join in giving to me, like, financially, like, on a monthly basis, or if they want to do, like, um, an annual basis, like, you know, for however long my commitment is. Um, and so if you're going short term, it might look a little different, like you might have more upfront costs um, and like less monthly, right? And so like it being in a, like growing up in an Indian Malayali like, like culture, one of the things I realized was like people never talked about money, 
right? Mm, and people never, I never like, thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. And people, Unless they're, you know, at a conference and they're like, yeah, we have some, yeah. some calls that we yeah. have to cover. Yeah, we're offering, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. But, like, other than that, like, it was one of those things it's that, like... There's stigma with it, you know? You don't talk about it. Like, yeah. if you're struggling with money, if you need money, it's not something It's always keeping up about. with the Joneses. You're, yeah. like, making it look like you're perfectly you're perfect, high. Yeah, like, yeah. everything's, like, looks really shiny from the outside, but, like, yeah. inside people are struggling, right? So, like, one of the things that I had to overcome first was, like, oh my gosh, like, I have to ask people for money. They're going to think I'm lazy because I just graduated from college and I could be working, and here I am just, like, choosing to go to missions. That's so interesting because I feel like, like, okay, not to knock any other career, but I feel like it's harder. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's not. Yeah, like, it really is. Like, you know, because, like, there's a lot of pride that you have to get through, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Right? Um, but I had to, like, go to the Bible, and my leaders did a really good job of explaining, like, biblical like support raising mm. get this guys jesus himself had a support team <laughs> right so yeah, like, it did. talks about how like jesus wherever he went and was followed by his disciples and a few people that always traveled with him that provided for every single one of his needs mm. like so like his yeah. earthly needs like right like places to stay um food to eat like all this stuff right so like, like that's like one of those things that like really changed my mind. And honestly, everyone can't go. Like everyone is yeah. not called to go. I was like, right? we'd all be, you know, in it, like all around the world. And yeah. then who would be like, I guess, um, witnessing to people yeah. at your workplace? Yeah, exactly, you. exactly. Right? Not everyone is called. I should say to world missions, like yeah. global missions, yeah. right? Um, so, but everyone has a great commission. Like everyone was was given the great commission to go and make disciples of every nation. Right? And so, like, it's important to realize what your role is. It's still, like, yeah. it's still kind of uncomfortable for people who don't understand. So I always have to explain. Like, my yeah. parents, like, they had to explain to them. And I still do um, of what, like, support raising is. Right? And then family was another thing. Like, mm. like that obstacle. Like, when I first told my parents, they were completely against it. Because the first trip that I did was nine months long. And I had just graduated from college. So they really wanted me to go to grad school, get a job, yeah. right? The normal things, yeah. right? And so I was giving up a year of my life. Um, and they, could, they couldn't, again, cultural like expectations, like you're a girl, how are you gonna travel the world like by yourself? Like you need to be married. Like they threatened that I should, they threatened me with marriage. Like you know, like you ha you gotta get married before you go. But honestly, like the two things that helped me was prayer. Right. The first mm. thing was prayer. I prayed for my parents because I knew what God had spoken to me, and I knew it clearly. But at the same time, I knew God hadn't done the same thing for my parents. Mm. So my prayer was that God, like, would you open your eyes? Would you open their eyes? to see my calling clearly as well, mm. right? And so it wasn't like as 100%, like no one else is gonna know your calling better than you and God, right? Yeah. So they're not gonna fully understand it, but like that was the first thing and God literally showed up in like really cool ways and like <laughs> lit it was like people would come to our church and like just share things and like my parents would come up to me afterwards and be like, do, do they know? Do they know what you're doing? I'm like, they have no idea. <laughs> like they have, that person has no yeah. idea what I'm planning to do. So it was like really cool. Um, so God will come through. Um, yeah. And the second thing was like honoring them. Um, mm. I was actually talking to Nina about this. Like sometimes we have this thing of like, oh, my parents are telling me not to go. Like I'm going to be disobedient. Mm. Um, I, if I go, if I choose to go like to missions and my parents don't want me to, I'm being disobedient. Um, one of the things I realized was like, there, you have to obey your parents, right? But like the Bible says, like children obey your parents, right? But if you're an adult, I would say above eight. If you're living in America, 18 and above, <laughs> maybe even 21, depending on your maturity level, you have to like take that up with God, right? And so like my thing was like I wanted to make sure my parents knew that I respected them, yeah, and I honored them, and I, I was listening to the things that they were telling me. Um, so like if they had a worry, I didn't shut it down. I'd be like stop talking mom like it's gonna be okay no i would like i would take what they were saying and i would be like okay like i don't know the answer to that right now like when i find out like i'll let you know and just continually like keeping them in the loop like you know like there's nothing worse than like, your parents not knowing like where you're going what you'll be doing like where you'll be staying like keep them in the loop like as much as you can and that's a way of honoring them but like 
don't let it always be you talking. Like, like yeah, let God do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let God work on their hearts yeah. too. Like, you know, and let them talk too. Let them voice yeah. it. And that's a way that God can be glorified too. Yeah. You know, because if you form your argument, you get ready, you yeah. rebuttal, whatever, yeah. and you're being glorified. But if yeah. God comes in, like, there have been times in my life, and you know, it's something different. Yeah. Like, not me going for missions. Yeah. Um, but literally, God will tell something to my parents. I'm like, thank, thank the you, Lord. Jesus. <laughs> like, like, I don't have to do that. Yeah, because yeah. like, there's only yeah. so much you can yeah, say. Exactly. You know? And like God can say whatever He has to say, like so much better than yeah, he can. yeah. Like He works like, people's hearts. Yeah. Like, like there's, I mean, yeah. I always like feel weird about this verse, but I say that God hardened yeah. Pharaoh's heart. Yeah. So I feel like if He can harden, He can like soften. <laughs> Obviously. <Yeah. laughs> so you know, it works both ways, yeah. and I, like God has the ability to yeah, do that. So if does. He wants you to go, like He yeah. will, you know. But you also have to ask Him. Yes. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess my last question is, um, like, when you go for missions, yeah. obviously there are like struggles that you encounter, like being away from home, um, even like adjusting to a new culture. So what are some like, I guess, like quick tips? Because yeah. we won't get the full thing in this video, yeah. but just like yeah. some like starters. Yeah. So um, you might experience this depending on the length of your trip. Mm. Um, like if it's like a two I would say anywhere between like a two to three month trip like a two week I'm gonna say like a week long to like a three month long trip some of these things may not be applicable to you hmm. because a lot of the times like you're in that like culture shock place where you're like just absorbing everything around it you. takes a long time to actually yeah you know, to like for your body like to visiting. realize like yeah <laughs> I'm not visiting anymore like yeah. you know um so like and I'm not saying that if you are doing like a, a week long to three month trip like you won't feel these things yeah um, but the first thing is like you will feel homesick, right? Like you will you may think like I'm ready to get out of my house like deuces <laughs> like you know Yeah, but, like you will like miss like your family. You will miss your home. You'll miss your bed, right? You'll miss um, your friends like your siblings like you know all these like even like American comforts like yeah. for us like cheese and Doritos like that was our stuff the like, thing like we were oh, all crazy. <laughs> yeah, because like, like where I was, like there was no cheese, like you know. I and, like, yeah, and so like like that Asian was a countries, thing. it's not a you know dairy is not a big thing. Yeah, yeah. So like like you will feel homesick, but you have to realize like sometimes I let that feeling of homesickness like um, morph my experience into like a bad one, mm. right? And and I would I would point the finger at God and be like, God, like it's your fault that I'm feeling like this, right? But if God's called you to something it's a good thing yeah and no matter how painful it is no matter how uncomfortable it is like press in press through that right because a lot of times like where god's calling us is right through those things right mm. it's right through working out like not relying on your family um working through like working pushing through like those comforts that we have right and and that's often what takes us to the next level like mm. in our relationship with him because we realize like we are not of this world right like we live in this world but we're not of this world so the things that we're supposed to hold on to are like heavenly things right mm -hmm. and not earthly things because all those things will will fade in us um thing would be like to be flexible like there's nothing worse than like a team member who like wants to have it their way and like it kind of just like turns a whole group is like it just it's like a sour like i don't know how to explain it like I, I know I get like what you're trying to say. taste in like everyone's mouth and everyone, yeah. then nobody wants to do it's anything. It's like how people say like, yeah. um, like you're only as strong as like your weakest yeah. member. Yeah. yeah. So just be flexible. Um, trust your leaders. Like if they, one of the things like our organization like pushed us to do was to trust our leaders like even when we didn't agree with what they were saying. I mean, if they're asking you to sin, then like, okay, whatever, like don't do that. <laughs> but like if they ask you to like, like act right away without like knowing the reason why we were expected to do that and that was that required a lot of flexibility with our hearts and like our pride and our like ambition and our will right but also just a lot of like trusting and like okay i'm trusting that my leader is praying and seeking god and um yeah so like i think those are the two biggest things like push through push through like those feelings of like homesickness like uncomfortability um, and also, like, just be flexible, like, wherever you are, wherever God's placed you, because, honestly, you're going to have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. I've got stuck in countries with typhoons and, like, all oh this stuff, gosh. so it's, like, you have to learn, and slept yeah. in a McDonald's, like, overnight, like, you have <laughs> oh to <my> learn. <laughs> yeah. You have to learn to be flexible and just take things as they come and have a positive attitude, like, with everything, mm. like, you know, like, there's joy in every moment, right? Like, there's joy, overflowing joy in every moment. It's all how you frame it. It's all how you frame it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for yeah. coming. <laughs> like, thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah. And now yeah. you know how to yeah. yeah. um, But yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful because maybe you might go on missions. Maybe yeah. you um, are about to go on missions and you just wanted to hear some advice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. And we'll see, well, I'll see you guys next week. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh -huh. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's recording now. Great. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, let's sit here and see. Do you and want the stack of books? Um, let's, yeah, bring the stack of books. Thank you. Yeah. it's so thin. Okay, let's try this. And see. Kevin, right? Huh? You're reading Harry Potter, right? Oh, yeah. No, no. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah. I'm such a Harry Potter fan. Right? Man, I could see you. Um, okay, I can see you. Oh yeah, move back to that's a good idea. Okay, now we'll see if it's good. We have to also be like super, like, close.